Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today, Flight Sim World Part 2. Now, that video I published Friday was my first look at Flight Sim World, the second time I had played it. Uh, the first time I played it, I'd just done a quick check to make sure everything was working, and then the second time was that video. So, I had some complaints, a few things I wanted to address, and literally, the day I uploaded that... Dovetail announced the updates. There were basically the updates, the next few updates were gonna address basically everything I had to say about it. Oh Lord. Dovetail, you're making me work to make this video. On a Thursday afternoon, it's like six, almost 6.30 Thursday afternoon. I was gonna watch one of the Ghost in the Shell movies, but no, now I gotta do this. Let's take a quick look at what this update brings, shall we? All right, so here is the forum post from uh, Dovetail's forums, and this update adds some new features, notably Checklist and Cold and Dark. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, Checklist was added, uh, or that was in FSX, right? Well, kind of, sort of. The Checklist and FSX were on the kneeboard. This is something different. I'll show you what that's going to be here in a second, but notably, they've added the ability to start Cold and Dark. Now, there is a known bug... Uh, when you start cold and dark, if you if you're using the PA46 Malibu or the DA40, I think that's the Diamond Star, then if auto mixture is disabled, you will not be able to start the engine in assisted mode. I'm not going to worry about that, but you might want to know know that just in case you're playing around with this. Uh, there's some updates to avionics and various aircraft. One thing I do want to mention, however. I uh, I had an issue when I first... I, this is like my third time recording this video because the first two times, the game crashed on me. Whenever I started a flight, the game would crash. I tried different combinations of aircraft. I tried different places. It, it just crashed every time. Uh, so, And I didn't see anyone else reporting this crash. I've been looking through various forums and nobody else was talking about it, so I'm guessing it was very just me. But just in case it wasn't me, it wasn't just me, what I did to fix it, I've already tested and it is working now. Uh, I just re-verified the integrity of the, uh, the game on Steam. That It took about 10 minutes and it did have some files that were corrupted somehow. I don't know how or why, but if that's happening to you, uh, Re-verifying re the integrity of the game ca cache should be the first thing you do on any game that's performing like that. And that's one of the reasons I like Steam is because it's nice and easy. I didn't have to completely uninstall and reinstall the whole damn 15 gig game Ay, like I would with FSX. Anyway, we're going to start a flight. Now, we're going to try to do a quick flight. The weather is turning nasty out there. Uh, we're going to take the Cherokee. What's the Cherokee's cruise speed? Uh, 122 knots. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, I'm going to configure the Cherokee and I'm just going to fill the tanks up and I want a crew. I'm not going to worry about fine tuning it. Weather, I want a sunny day with 40 miles of visibility and we'll reset the current time and we'll select a departure airport. We're going to go from Fernandina Beach to Northeast Florida Regional, which is St. Augustine, and we're going to plan direct because it's right along the coast if we just keep the ocean on our left side we'll be fine uh waypoints fernandina beach inlet uh mayport deep forest uh and there's a vi visual waypoint right here that's the palm valley bridge right there local knowledge i know these things and then saint augustine uh probably a cruising altitude for this no let's see southbound odd in florida i believe yeah, I think it's southbound's odd, so just uh, 5,500 would be, work fine. Now, new options down here. We can. I want it to start cold and dark, and we can choose a start position. So remember, my last video, you couldn't do either of these, so this is definitely the new stuff. And also notice it tells us, since it's the first time I'm doing a flight plan, it tells us the information. So at a speed of 122 knots, this should take about 20 minutes. And we're going 38 miles. It sounds good. That's not far enough to be a legal cross-country flight, but oh well. We're just going to do a quick hop over. And we are now ready to fly. So, um, I'm running this in windowed mode right now because it's easier to set up the recording when it's in windowed mode. 
I'm not going to switch it to full screen mode. I'll just run it in windowed mode. So there may be some performance suffering compared to the last video, but most likely that's because I am running in window mode and recording at the same time. All right, and it definitely spawned us in a parking spot here at Fernandina Beach. Just turn that off real quick. And just a quick review of our flight plan. Straight down. All right, we're going to go ahead and start. And here we are in the Piper 28. Now, I chose the Piper 28 because we're going to be checking out the physics. This would be a better aircraft to do the physics on. And if you look on your instrument panel, they have these new options here. So I don't know what the headset's there for. Can I hide this? No, I cannot. Okay. But if we click this, it brings up our checklist. Now, it's flashing view lock down there. This is a new thing. This is the engine start checklist, and it's interactable. So throttle to 5%. Right there. Master switch on. And you can see it's highlighting the items. This is freaking awesome. I This is really, really neat. This is really going to help you new guys out. I am a... You know I always like things easier for the new people. Because us, us seasoned veterans, we know how to do this. I could probably start this plane up inside of five minutes blindfolded without even running the checklist. Because... Once you know what you're doing, most airplanes are pretty much the same. They're, or they're, they're very, very similar. They all follow the same logic. But for you new guys, you don't know where to begin, and this is going to help you out a lot. This highlights the item for you, so no more searching around for switches. Better yet, if you don't want to click on it, you can just do that. Clicking the checklist item does the item thing for you. So electrical pump on. I'm going to go ahead and flip that on just to show that. Mixture, rich. I'm going to advance that manually. Rotate the key to start. And I uh, believe it is in both position now. Oops. Right, throttle, advance when engine fires. There we go. Electrical fuel pump off avionics on avionics are turning on now that's so far this is it that's they only have one checklist for this aircraft anyway there might be more for the other ones and that's the engine start checklist and that's all they really have now you can turn on advanced mode and this i presume just lets you flip through things Okay, no, it'll still do it for you, but it won't highlight it like it does in the normal mode. All right, so we are done with the checklist now. Now, only the engine start right now, but that shows us where things are going to be going in the future. All right, I'm going to look around me real quick. Uh, I see another Piper and a Cub over there. Fernandina is usually a pretty busy airport, but we don't have the same levels of traffic that we do in FSX. So real quick, I just need to familiarize myself with things on this plane. There's my RPM gauge right down there. Let's bring the fuel mixture out for ground ops. Landing lights. Beacon lights should be on. That should be part of the checklist. Uh, pipers are a bit weird with where they put their strobe lights, especially these old ones. This one does appear to have strobe lights, just looking at it anyway. Alrighty, well, we'll have to find it. Can you click that? Oh, cool, it's down there now. That's neat. Is this in both? That's on the left. Oh, yeah, it's a Piper. Okay. What's this one? That doesn't do anything. Alright, I'm going to set the aircraft up. Do we have... We do have a, a GNS 430, but... It's highlighted blue. Oh, it's running through the self tap. Oop, okay, the, that needs to be realigned. That's not how that looks. I can't click on anything either. There's no buttons. It's all in blue. Well, this plane I don't think has a GPS anyway, so we're going to have to do this manually. I don't have any of my charts in front of me. 
But I do have my iPad, so I will go ahead and bring up... Since the nav data has been updated, it should match, so I'm going to launch Flight Plan Go on the iPad real quick. New database is about... I've already early downloaded it already. And we're at Foxtrot Hotel Bravo. Frequencies is what I'm looking for. CTAF is on 122.7, so we're going to set 122.7. that over. Activate COM1. Mute the marker because I don't want that thing coming on. Set this to crew mode. Can I change the volume? Dovetail if you're watching and you probably are. Can you make that work? Just a request from me. The only game I've ever seen that work in though is Falcon BMS and DCS World though so it's not a big deal. Alright I'm gonna put this in the altitude mode just so I don't forget it later. Alrighty then. Uh, we do have an AWOS here, 118.07. I'll use COM2 for that. 118. Oops. 07. Oop. How the hell did that get about that? 118.07. 075. Why is it not registering me? 122. Hold on. One, two, two point. Oh, I'm on seven two. That might have something to do with it. There we go. And now switch us over to COM2 for a second. Why is that not working? That's COM2 on. I should be hearing the AWOS. 118.075, 118.07. That's on. Oh well, I guess we'll have to do it manually. Kilo Foxtrot Hotel Bravo, automated weather observation, 1744 Zulu. Wind calm, visibility greater than 20 miles. Sky conditions clear. Temperature 15 Celsius, 2.5 Celsius. Altimeter 2992. All right, 2992, and the winds were calm, I believe, so best runway 5 probably be good for takeoff, and that's to our left, looks like he's heading that way too, so we're going to select runway, oh wait, runway 9, not runway 5, sorry, I'm thinking at a different airport, we're departing to the south. Hello. Foxtrot Hotel Bravo traffic. Breaks off. Hyper Golf Bravo. Give it some Romeo gas. Golf India. Take Clear to our left. Niner. Departure to the south. Oops. I meant to hit taxi out, not departure. Oh well. I've done that in FSX before too. Alrighty. And I'm gonna just do a run up as we go. Alright, so left goes up, right goes down, right goes up, left goes down, up, down, left and right. All flight controls are working. Watch our wingtip on this hangar here. That thing jets out a little bit. Runway 9 is down here at the end. I think that Hello, other... Foxtrot, Hotel, Bravo, Traffic, Hyper, November 8, 5, 8, India, Whiskey is 3 miles northwest, 1, 500, bound to land. Runway four. He's three to the northwest. He's coming in runway four. He should be no factor if we get off the ground quick enough. All right, landing light. Gonna turn that on. I don't. I don't know where the strobe key is, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Zoom this out a bit. And that's runway niner over there. Crossing runway 13. All right, quick check. No one on final. No one on the runway. India Whiskey is on downwind runway four. Downwind runway four. He should be no factor if he's on the downwind. He's behind us then. All right. 
now we're gonna take off to parts to the south. Hello, Foxtrot, Hotel, Bravo, Traffic, Piper, Golf, Bravo, Royal, right. Golf, we recenter my Take you off, Runway, Niner, South, Departure. I just wish those eight to... I could probably get used to those voices. If they were sped up a bit. Rotate. I don't know if I have my labels turned on or not. They're on now. Yeah, he's on base. So we had a safe departure. Nobody's nobody's gonna run us over. All right, coming up on 500 feet. Let's go ahead and turn onto the crosswind. Since he's on final, I'm going to offset my crosswind a bit and fly towards those clouds. I don't want to get too close to him. So we're going to fly at a bit of an angle. At least till we're at 1,500 feet. Then we should be clear. And oh, look, we're at 1,500 feet. All right, let's turn on course. I can't remember what that course was, but I do know we just need to keep the ocean on our left side and climb up to 5,500. All right, so overall, I like this update, other than it crashing my game. We do have traffic on our nose, seven miles out, Super Cub. Turn this way a bit so we can avoid him. So at some once we get the cruising altitude, I'll uh, do some flight tests. Let's uh let's actually talk to departure one two seven point zero. And request flight following. I'm not a big fan of these voices. Maybe if you sped them up, they'd sound better, but. I think the FSX voices sounded better. Alrighty. Zero six seven three. Zero six seven three. See, that voice doesn't sound too bad. Alright. Alright, he has us. That is correct. See, that voice doesn't sound that bad. If it was sped up a little bit, it would sound a lot better. Some of them really don't sound terrible. Alright, just verify our call sign. Romeo Golf India, all right. Just keep the ocean on our left side. I can see the plant. I see Mayport. That's our first waypoint. Five thousand five hundred at ten o'clock. Got him. No factor. So overall, I do like this. The, 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 the frame rate is very nice. The graphics are really good. I, this looks great. I will say that. You know, we just need a weather engine, and this might actually start being a lot better. Is that for me? 
Wayne. No. All right. Coming up to 5,000 now. I think what I'm going to do is some uh, flight tests real quick. Just like basic slow flight. I might go ahead and do that now, actually. All right. So, find my RPM gauge down there. Let's pull the throttle back. Let the speed drop. Maintain about 5,100. Go ahead and dump the flaps. Departure. Piper, November 7, 5, I want to get the aircraft in slow flight. Piper, Archer, on miles northeast of Kilo, Fox Trot. All right, we're on the back side of the power curve. Power for altitude, pitch for airspeed. Piper, November 7, 5, 6, Charlie, Yang, departure. Squawk, All right, zero, increase four, power four, to maintain four. altitude. Squawk, Fido, 4, Fido, 4. Piper, 6, Charlie, Yankee. Pitch is my airspeed. I want to maintain right at 50 knots. Radar contact to mile northeast of Kilo Foxtrot Hotel Bravo 1000 altitude 992. Pitch does seem to be maintaining airspeed. Copy. And it is throttle is on the altitude. And quick test of Yep. My controls are really sluggish right now as they should be. Very uncoordinated in a turn as well. That is correct. That's how it should be. So real quick, I'm just going to tune them but not contact them and see if that trick still works. All right, let's go ahead and recover from this. Give it full power. The nose drop just a little bit. Flaps in one notch. Coming into the green arc. 70 knots. Flaps up. So yeah, slow flight, it performed just like it should have. The controls were sluggish. Uh, I was definitely flying on the back side of the power curve, and it was throttle for altitude, pitch for airspeed. That is 100% correct. See, I wanted to do it in this plane, or the Cub, because doing it in the Seneca, or the Mirage, or the Malibu, it, it, I think those planes are too heavy, and their engines are too strong, so it won't quite perform 100%. All right, let's get up to 5,500 and continue on our flight. All right, level off 5,005. Leave the throttle at full for now. I must say, this looks a lot better than stock FSX does. In fact, I, this actually competes with even my modified FSX in terms of looks alone and definitely in performance. It's, it already looks pretty good even compared to my modified FSX and performs great. All right, let's throttle back. Now, I have had a look through the, uh, the file and folders for this game and everything is the same uh, well not everything there are some changes notably to the aircraft CFG file I saw some things that were different but it makes me wonder if my old tricks would still work because there's a there's a thing you can do for the aircraft CFG file for uh, piston engine airplanes where you can actually make it so if you run the engine too hard it will blow up in your face and I'm wondering if you could still do that. I'm not going to worry about it, though, but I'm genuinely curious. All right, we're cruising here at 5,500. There's Mayport right down there. Not 100% legit looking, but okay. 
and get this trim set up right. Alrighty then. Hands off the controls. We're trimmed for the most part. Still wants to go into a bit of a descent. There we go. Alright, and EGT right here. Bring that mixture out a little bit more. Right there should work. I'm going to increase power just a little bit. I want 2400 RPM, please. I'm looking down at that autogen down there. It looks quite nice. That definitely looks like Jack's Beach is down there. I mean, I'm sure if I were to go down there and start looking, yeah, I could find problems with it. Like, I see one right now. That shoreline's a little smaller than what, a real, what the real Jack's Beaches look like. And I can tell you that's it's not all houses down there. It's mostly shops and whatnot at Jack's Beach. All right, so we're now south of Mayport, which is our first waypoint. There's Craig over there. There's a Super Cub landing. There's. Some, I really do not like the camera shake in Lock Spot View. There's Deep Forest down there, just south of Deep Forest should be the Palm Valley Bridge, which is a bridge that crosses the Intercoastal Waterway. Just taking a look-see, that looks like that's going to be I-95 right there. No, that's the Intercoastal. What am I saying? I-95 is over here. Can't quite see it from here. And that's one thing I like, but you can see 295 should be over there. And I like that I can't quite see it from here because that is pretty realistic. You would have a hard time seeing even a, a major road like that from this distance and altitude. Now, I can clearly see Atlantic Boulevard, but that's because I'm right over it. So, so far, so good. This looks nice. I've climbed a bit. This view, actually. This is a nice view. It's like a GoPro attached to the... Uh... I do miss that the aircraft views are gone, though. I, I, I enjoyed having the uh, different aircraft views, especially when they were set up properly. They could be really nice, but they're gone now. That's a shame. Maybe they'll bring them back. Okay, we got our old-fashioned Bendex King avionics here. Not worried about the autopilot. Alright, back to the pilot view. I think that Cherokee's on the left downwind. That would help if I'd use my rotor. Make this a lot nicer. All right, TPA here is a thousand feet above the field, which is basically a thousand feet on the altimeter because the air field is right at sea level. All right, let's go ahead and set this thing up for landing. Landing light on. Mixture full rich. Gas undercarriage. Mixture prop. Gas. Undercarriage, mixture, prop, seatbelts. All right. Let me get down a little bit more. Yeah, I think that is that a Cherokee. Yeah, that Cherokee must be on the uh, the left pattern. Go ahead and turn on to the downwind. Looks like he's turning base now. Looks like he's on final. I haven't heard him get a landing clearance yet, though. We are still on their frequency, right? Yeah. Alright, 
my straddle back up to 2200. Level off a thousand feet. numbers power out to the base. Are we ever going to get a landing clearance? Um, something must be wrong. I've lost my radio. They've given us a landing clearance. All right, well, we'll just do this normally. First notch of flaps in. In real life, they'd start using the light gun right about now, so let's just pretend that's what they're doing. We know we got our landing clearance. We just didn't hear them. Overshot that massively. A little high. Go and dump the flaps. flying this thing so badly. Not coordinated at all. Alright, just like before, power for altitude, pitch for airspeed. Threes on that one. Let's see, we can make this first one here. All right, we'll exit the runway. What happened to our radios there, but flaps. Flaps are up. Mixture out for ground ops. And right now, the light gun will be signaling us to just taxi to parking. Uh, where is parking at on this airport? Looks like there's a remote ramp over there. Alright, so we'll go that way. Interesting, I don't know what happened to the radio there. We are still on tower's frequency. 121.175. No, we're not. We got switched over to another frequency for some reason. I don't know what happened there. Is it just me as the plane not wanting to turn? Interesting. I've, I don't know what happened there. I heard something click, but I didn't think anything of it, and then all of a sudden we lost our radio. That was interesting. I'll have 
to see what happened there. I might have accidentally hit a button. Alright, so that was a nice short little flight in Flight Sim World. And just looking at the new update, uh, one other thing we need to look at. They claimed to have adjusted the night lighting, so I'm going to park the plane real quick and then we're going to go somewhere for a quick test of that and then we'll call it on the video. And this is where I've come to see if they fixed the night lighting thing like they said they had, and yes they have. Uh, the sky no longer looks ridiculously bright. And I can see the ground a bit better. Coincidentally, we're on an aircraft carrier right now. And curiously enough, it looks like the carriers are still roaming around. There actually was a ship way the heck out there. An actual cruise ship that uh, was sailing away from San Fran. But this is one of the schedule carriers. In FSX, it would actually roam around. Interesting, it's still here. I wonder if it will uh, still roam around. I have to look up the schedule and see if it disappears at the right time. But I really came out here to see. Alrighty. So I can definitely see the ground textures a little bit better. Where is the moon? All right, we have almost a full moon. That looks pretty right, actually. I should be able to see that those textures that well with the full moon. Almost full moon. Ah, uh, these waves. Oh my god, these waves. They look better, but they still don't look good. Night lighting looks nice. Now, the Pete de Resistance. I don't see it out there, though. I think they removed it. No! <laughs> they removed the, uh, the carrier. Oh, that's a shame. It should be out here somewhere. Is that it? No, that's a sailboat. Go away, sailboat. Where's that one ship at that I saw? He was over here somewhere. Oh, well, he's gone now. I don't see the carrier. There was a very, very low detail carrier that was off the coast of San Francisco since like Flight Sim 98. It's been there. It's really ugly. And I, it was there in every version of Flight Sim since FS 98. And it's just not there now. I don't see it. I was hoping it would still be there. Because that, that thing has just not changed at all in in the decades since 1998. But it's not here anymore. Looks like they got rid of it. That's a shame. I wanted it to be there. I was going to declare it like a freaking Flight Sim heritage site. Like, you could not touch it. Oh. Well, anyway. Looks like the updates are good. Flight Sim World is coming along quite nicely. And... They they fixed things before the uh, it's just they fixed the problems I had with it before that video even came out, which is amazing to me. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and we shall see you next time. Take care, everyone. Holy wow, that's a crosswind! Holy cow! I wonder if I could pit maneuver.